um, Felici and Lenny were talking about Unit 5 in Hanson and Quinn, which starts on page 111. Um, and the first thing that we were talking about is, this is unit is about the passive voice, okay? We want to explain what that is. Um, um, and it's, a, it's something quite strange. Uh, Felici has written up an example of a simple sentence. The first one, I threw a break is a sentence in which the verb is, has what call, what's called the active voice, in which the subject, the I, acts upon something else, okay, and initiates the action and, and, um, and carries it out. In, in the second sentence, a brick was thrown by me, um, you're saying exactly the same thing, but you're, 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 you're doing it in a different way. Instead of um, fronting that person who's actually doing the action, you front the thing, you make the subject um, the thing that's acted upon, namely the brick, um, and you demote, so to speak, the subject to a my me phrase, a brick was thrown by me, uh, promotes the brick and demotes the subject, but seems to be saying the same thing. So th th this raises the question, why, why do you have two ways of saying the same thing? And one that's a active, that portrays an active doer, and the other that portrays the thing that being acted upon. So there are cultural differences to these things. In other words, what happens is societies um, impose value on sentences, uh, different kinds of value on sentences of this kind. Uh, I, I think in our culture, were you taught this, Belisi, that you should avoid the passive voice that makes you seem wimpy? Instead of saying, I, I did this and I did that, or you did this and you did that, you say, if you say this was done, and you don't say either demote yourself or you, you leave yourself out altogether, it's sort of self-effacing. Mm -hmm. But then there are some cultures in which self-effacing is good. <laughs> and so it's better to do it that way. Um, there, there are also situations in which you want to, you want to, highlight something, the, the object instead of the subject, right, and things like that. So there are subtle differences between these things, some of them culturally imposed, some of them a matter of emphasis, um, some of them uh, you know, are mysterious in other ways. Um, but I think it's not totally clear. So so Belisi and I were talking about this, and we, we know that some of you when you're translating sentences, all the sentences that we've had so far, and Greek have only active verbs, we haven't learned any passive verbs. But some of you sometimes translate active sentences as passive. Um, it's interesting because in a certain sense you think they're the same, and in a certain sense they are, mm -hmm. okay? Um, but, but then again, they're not. Um, so you have to, if, you're, if you haven't been sensitized to this difference, Now's the time when you have to get sensitized. <laughs> so there are some example sentences in the in the um, in the drills. The first set of drills in Unit Five give you sentences to to look at, and we'll we'll play with them a little bit too in class. Um, the The book starts out with active versus passive um, um, because we do have the, this these categories in English. Um, and they probably exist in uh, lots of languages. But <clears throat> they, in doing that, they took the cowardly approach because passive is much less important as a voice in Greek. Okay, this is, remember, passive and active, those are the highest categories of the Greek verb. In other words, if the first thing that any Greek verb has is voice, active or passive. But there's also a third vo category, which has the misleading name of middle voice, as though it's something in between active and passive. And most people, if you say, well, what's in between active and passive, what do they think of? Reflexive. Reflexive verbs, yeah. So, so uh, you know, I like myself, I hurt myself. That's, a, that's a, a, a sentence in which the subject is the sa at the same time the direct object. That has nothing to do with being middle voice, okay? Um, he, he, the book also makes a mistake of confusing them, uh, uh, unfortunately, when we get to the middle voice in the next lesson. 
But so you want to separate out that whole idea of doing something to yourself. That's middle. That's not middle. Okay, and it's just a reflexive verb. It just happens to be that you are the object and the subject of the sentence. Oops. So, so what is the middle voice? Uh, we're, we're not going to look at it here, but I think you should you should think about what what it, what this is to kind of get a beginning intuition, and that also explains the structure of this of these forms a bit. So because the middle is way older in Greek, and um, the original contrast in voice was between active and what's now called middle, and the, uh, the passive developed out of the middle, okay? And then uh, it's the same as the middle for a whole bunch of Greek verb forms. So in effect, when you're learning the passive voice, you're also learning the forms of the middle voice. Um, it's kind of backwards, okay, but historically speaking, but it's okay. And then there are two, two verb forms in which it's different. The future and the aorist have different forms for active, for middle rather, and for passive. In all the other Greek verbs, forms of the Greek verb, they're the identical. So we're going to start out by learning the ones that are identical for active and middle, and then we're going to look at the ones in which you have separate passive forms, okay? Um, but here's the sample sentence for what's the middle voice if you're curious. It's not reflexive. This is the, this is the sentence that um, in, in, um, in Sanskrit, which you know, Sanskrit is the language that's cognate with, yeah, with ancient Greek, and of the same um, historical period too, or even a little bit older. And, um, and when the Greeks in the 5th century BCE were inventing things like history and uh, philosophy and stuff like that. Um, in, in ancient India, they were developing uh, the study of grammar in fantastic ways. So, so you have people in the 5th century BC in India developing the concept of phoneme, which is a crucial concept for the modern study of language, which didn't happen in the West until the 19th century. Yeah. So anyway, they were very smart about grammar. They spent a lot of time thinking about it, and because they, they've had to teach people this this language, the Sanskrit language. And the, here's the, that. This is the sample sentence in in Sanskrit for what's a, a difference. What's the difference between active and middle? So the, the, they use the verb sacrifice, and they don't sacrifice cows, because except in the older, really old text. But anyhow. Mm -hmm. You know, cows are sacred in India, but in the old text, they they did the Indo-European thing, like the Greeks, and they sacrificed cows. So it's all right. So <laughs> um, I sacrifice a cow for you. That's active. I sacrifice a cow for myself. Okay, that's middle, right? You can see why the book gets confused about reflexive, because we put for myself in there, but that's not the same thing as sacrificing myself, right? Very different, right? So. Um, so the, this this idea of a word uh, of a verb that presents the subject as acting upon some external thing, as opposed to acting on an external thing for the benefit of the subject. Okay, that's a that's the difference between active and middle. It doesn't spring to mind. We're not used to this concept. Okay, um, and so we're going to learn it. And there, are, it's it's a, it's a large category. And it's hard to get a feel for it for uh, us as native speakers of those of us who are native speakers of English and other Indo-European languages in which the middle voice has disappeared as a separate category. But we got plenty of middle verbs in English. We just don't think of them that way. <laughs> All right. So um, let's get back. That, that's the basic thing we want to we, we want to do is to give you the sense that there are actually three voices: active, passive, and middle. But the passive is actually an outgrowth of the middle. What we're going to learn first are the forms which are both middle and passive. They're identical for a whole bunch of, for the majority of Greek verbs. And then we're going to learn those which are distinctively passive. Okay, so uh, that's, that's it for this.